as we have discussed on this show before, overturning Roe versus Wade is by no means the end of our mission to end abortion. What's most likely is that abortions will continue in states controlled by Democrat pro-abortion extremists, while states that have already limited abortion in some capacity will move closer and closer to eradicating abortion within their borders. As states continue to shift one way or the other, it will be vital to keep a pulse on how state legislators and elected officials are moving to promote a culture of life. And we're joined in studio now with one of those elected officials, Mark Burnovich, who currently serves as Attorney General of Arizona and is running for U.S. Senate. Thank you so much for joining me, Attorney General. Thank you, Prudence, for having me in studio today. Of course. I want to get started by talking to you about Arizona's 15-week limit on abortion that was recently passed. What has been the impact of that law, and what else is Arizona doing to promote and defend life? Well, the legislature in Arizona and the policymakers have been trying to create a culture that protects life. And as attorney general, I've been doing everything I can to make sure we're protecting the most vulnerable. And whether that's going literally to the Supreme Court and filing briefs in like the Dobbs case, um, pledging or committing to defending these pro, the pro-life legislation, or literally right now we have a case pending at the U.S. Supreme Court that's named Isaacson versus Brnovich because I stepped in to defend our um, laws that would prohibit abortions based on genetic defects. Um, and so we there's a lot of fights going on, and I think we're all waiting to see what the Supreme Court actually finally says when they overturn Roe v. Wade. Right. And what will the impact on these other cases being litigated be if Roe v. Wade is overturned, if we get a decision in the Dobbs case? What happens with a case well, like Isaacson? Well, it, it'll it'll be huge. I mean, um, once Roe v. Wade is overturned, uh, you know, hopefully, you will see, I think we have to win then, the, the our case, the Isaacson uh, versus Brnovich case. We'll have to win on those cases because, you know, it will return to the states and the elected officials instead of unelected judges. Mm -hmm. And I always remind folks that, remember, even people like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, thought Roe was, was a terrible decision. We all recognize the matter of constitutional law. It, it was an absolutely terrible decision. And so it was not only constitutionally suspect, but I think as Americans, we all realize deep down that it was morally bankrupt as well. Right. So now this will allow these important decisions to return back to the ele our elected representatives in the states um, where they can start to do everything they can to protect life. Right, as it should be. Now, talk to me about your pro-life record serving as attorney general. You know, the onus is on state legislators, elected officials in the states on the ground to defend these laws now. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is that, unfortunately, you know, I, I don't like politics. I had never ran for anything before I ran for AG, um, but I was a gang prosecutor before that, a federal prosecutor, and I've spent my career protecting the most vulnerable. And so I, I think it's important to have people that not just talk about issues that have a record. And so, uh, for example, when California went after, um, I, I can't remember the guy's name, Dan, not Dan Line, I can't remember his name, but when they went after him, we opposed the prosecution of him for going in and recording those undercover videos at right. the abortion clinics, the abortion mills. And, you know, we, we literally sent someone into court to, you know, make sure that he had the ability to expose the terrible things that were going on. Um, you know, we've been in court, we supported the right of the Kentucky Attorney General at the U.S. Supreme Court to argue on behalf of defending life when the governor there wouldn't. You know, we literally have a case now pending, Isaacson versus Brnovich. It is named after me because when other elected officials or prosecutors wouldn't, they, they wanted to agree to a stay. They said that they would go ahead and put the law on hold. I said, no, we're going to enforce the law. We're going to protect life. Mm -hmm. And that's why I got sued and the case is pending now. So my hope is, is that once they overturn Roe v. Wade, then we should be able to win on that case as well, or we'll get the um, that law to spring back into effect. So you you have to keep fighting, and you know you start to list off all the cases we've been involved in. I mean, heck, we last year we sued the Biden administration when they. Uh, me and a 12-state coalition sued the Biden administration mm -hmm. when they tried to uh, provide funding to, you know, ab abortion clinics, public taxpayer dollars. And so, you know, we sued him over that. So there are a lot of fights that we have been involved in. Yes. And we got to continue to do everything we can mm. to stand up for life, stand up for our values. And as conservatives, and I'm a conservative, it, we cannot be afraid to say this is why we believe this and this is what um, you know, we want to take place in the public square, whether it's our representatives, whether it's our AGs, we have to be engaged in political society in order to effectuate the change. Right. And we have to be able to answer those tough questions. And I wanted to shift gears for our last question to get your thoughts on something else happening in Arizona right now. Clarence Dixon is a man in Arizona who has been charged with brutally murdering a college student in the 70s, and he's been sentenced to death. His execution is now underway. Talk to me about how, as attorney general, you justified that sentence 
sentence, given your pro-life beliefs? You know, to me, Prudence, there is nothing contradictory about being in support of the death penalty and also protecting um, the unborn, because it all comes down to protecting innocent life. And we know that historically, there's, there's a lot of scholars, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas and, you know, other, you know, even biblical scholars that have said that society has a right to defend itself. And when you have people, like in the case you're talking about, I won't even say this guy's name, but he had brutally raped and killed a woman in the late 70s. He's gone through the appellate process, the federal courts, the state courts. He's had lawyers. Um, he, he literally raped multiple women. And I just think at that point he has given up his right to live in a civilized society. And in some ways, I think it shows how much we value life by saying that that person who brutally raped and killed a woman, raped other women, he has given up his right to live in a civilized society because we value life and safety so much. And at the end of the day, I tell folks that, look, the death penalty is the law. I'm a big blue, big believer in the rule of law, and that is the law, and I've spoken to victims, the victims' families, and they want some closure, they want some justice, and this is my way to help the victims. And I think too often, we focus on the defendants and not the victims um, of these or their families of these terrible crimes. Well, I appreciate your take on that and the work that you do to defend the unborn. Thank you so much, Attorney General Mark Brnovich. Thank you.